regarding the question regarding the questions um, uh, they will be after the presentation so just uh, you can uh, type it in the chat or just keep it and then uh, unmute yourself and ask the question um, also we will have some questions during the webinar uh, they that will be moderated by Ornella and Andrea in Zoom, you will see. Uh, and uh, before we uh, dig deeper in how to write effective resume, I will just uh, shortly introduce our speaker for today. Uh, so her name is Andrea Pochkovic and she is a founder of Balkan Hire, the recruitment company for small to medium remote companies from Europe, US, Australia, and Canada. And uh, she has experience in working in startups from US and Australia. And now one of her main goals uh, with the company is to bridge actually the gap between Balkan and Western workforces and to create better business environment and opportunities for all. Uh, I would say one of first steps uh, in applying to new opportunities, job opportunities is to have your CV ready and uh, tighten up and clear. So now we will uh, hear how to write it effectively. And I will give now the word to Andrea. Thank you, Elena. And uh, once again, thank you everyone for attending this uh, session. And I hope you will um, end up with some useful tips and that will help you in your future uh, job seeking. Uh, and I want to thank, thank also uh, Marie Curie Alumni Association for inviting me to uh, present. So uh, we have here a um, presentation. Let me just uh, see how to share it. Um, okay. Second. Okay. Um, okay, um, so as um, uh, said, can we you still don't it? see the presentation. No. Oh, the host needs to enable the participant to share a screen. Uh, you just need to, I think, Enable me or change the host. Okay. So uh, your resume should not be longer than one page. We said that's a myth. Uh, it's a myth because, um, again, I was saying that depending on the seniority level, so if someone is entry level or mid level, maybe they can keep to one page, but generally you can uh, expand to two pages. Uh, and if someone is senior, so someone that has over 15, 20 years of experience, uh, then they can go even above the two pages. However, one thing that's really relevant is that you don't include unnecessary information in the CV, uh, so that um, you can only you only stick to the the relevant uh, job experience and skills, etc. Um, in the CV. Hence, uh, why some people say that it shouldn't be longer than one page. Um, so that's on that. Um, let's continue here for the last one. Only paid positions are worth mentioning in your CV. So, um, okay, guys, you can uh, vote um, to see if you think this is a myth or truth. The poll is open, so you go and vote. So everybody has voted for myth and the correct answer is, is indeed a myth. Yeah, so um, especially again, if you're coming fresh out of uni, uh, if uh, you're in the entry level, um, seniority level. So um, definitely worth mentioning any kind of internships, scholarships, uh, teaching, maybe gigs or anything that you had 
uh, don't be afraid to share that only because uh, it was maybe volunteering or an unpaid position. Uh, again, as long as you emphasize the skills and lessons you learned um, through that whole experience. Um, okay, with this, we end this part of the presentation and we go to the next part, which is what makes a good resume. So it would be great if uh, you can share, I'm not sure, maybe in the chat, that would be good. Like in your opinion, uh, maybe one or two um, like things that make a resume good in your opinion. If you're too shy to share, then uh, we will continue. But as said, this is uh, this was imagined as um, interactive presentation. Um, so here we have this is just like um, a little brief part on um, the parts of a good CV. So the first one is uh, it should be lean, easy to skim, tr skim through and not stacked with often unnecessary info. Uh, we'll mention later what we mean by unnecessary info, uh, but uh, coming back to that one statement we had on how much time a uh, hiring manager or recruiter spends on uh, checking the, the CV and why the first impression is important, it's, um, this, is, this is related to that. So the second part is up-to-date, adapted, and relevant to the job applying. So once you get into the job hunting game, uh, the first thing you do, you go through different kind of job um, ads and you read their job description, and then you analyze the job description. Um, there'll be a whole uh, different part, an exercise where we're gonna uh, dive deeper on that. But an important thing to say here is uh, once you analyze the job description and watch, once you determine what they're looking for, you can craft your CV to be relevant and adapted for that specific um, position. As CV is, resume is a, a live document, so it should always be adjusted to uh, the company and position you are applying to. Um, third one, portray skills and competencies relevant to the job you're applying to. One resume does not work for all jobs, so that's related to what I just said. Or it includes information on the industries um, the candidate has experience with. So um, usually when uh, recruiters and hiring managers are uh, looking for candidates, um, they look for candidates that have experience in certain industries. So it's uh, very important to emphasize in your CV uh, what industries you have uh, experience with. Um, so make it just very transparent. Um, Fifth uh, contains a brief statement. So that's usually in the CV, you have the name and then below the name, there is a statement about um, yourself. Uh, I wanna say that you shouldn't go um, beyond two sentences and also you shouldn't make it too wordy. Uh, we'll come back to this part again in, in another part of the presentation. Um, corresponds to your profile on public platforms. And here we gave, gave some examples of uh, LinkedIn or I believe in your, uh, your uh, case, academia. Um, so make sure that the links are working in the CV. Well, first thing is uh, make sure that uh, what's stated in your CV reflects what is in your um, profile and vice versa. So sometimes we see that um, a candidate has a very updated LinkedIn, but their CV is not that good or the other way around. And uh, LinkedIn or these other platforms are very powerful for uh, potential employers to find you. So definitely uh, keep it up to date. Um, so the, the dates in uh, both the CV, for example, and the LinkedIn profile are correct. There is no like mistakes around that. Um, also make sure if you include a link um, to your profile in the CV, that it's working. So sometimes uh, there's an option to have like a clickable link. So the person can just click in the CV and go to the um, profile. Uh, sometimes they just include a URL of uh, the profile, but it doesn't work. So um, there is no point in including it if the link is not working. 
Um, then include keywords relevant to your top skills and to the job description. Um, again, coming back to this whole uh, part of analyzing the job description, uh, by analyzing the job description, seeing what you're looking for, you will um, determine what are uh, those skills that are required and what is it that, that's in your CV. And uh, those keywords are usually uh, soft and uh, hard or technical skills. Um, and you should list them um, somewhere at the beginning of the CV. So again, it's very uh, easy to notice it. Um, and eight is do not send your CV in uh, docs, um, but PDF, always convert the document. So um, maybe it sounds like basic, but we still get a lot of CVs which are in docs. And uh, that's simply not good because when you open it in different um, computers, uh, the formatting changes and it just doesn't look professional. So guys, don't do it. Um, so now we're going to talk about something called lean resume. Um, I mentioned that before. So a lean resume is is this um, like ideal resume, the, the one that um, has the most success. And how we imagine this is uh, we're gonna talk about the elements of a lean resume going from the top to bottom. So um, I know that we send out a, a message or an email uh, where we said to have your CV uh, ready. Um, so it would be great if you can uh, take a look at your CV and as we're going through uh, these parts, maybe you can check what you have, what you don't have. So first one is the photograph. Um, so there is, I, I wanna emphasize that uh, having a photograph included in your CV, it's a cultural thing. Uh, for example, in the US uh, is generally not acceptable. Um, while in Europe and other parts, um, it's, it's pretty normal to have a photograph. Uh, of course, it needs to be suited for the occasion. It needs to be professional. It needs to be smaller in size. Um, maybe you'll be surprised to, to hear that uh, we get resumes where the photo is taking half of the document. Or I think once we had a girl that sent the resume where she had a photo on every page of her resume. So those are like some very extreme cases. But if you do decide to include a photograph, definitely uh, not have it in focus. Uh, but it, it's up to you to decide. But also in the job description, sometimes uh, it says um, that uh, you should or should not include a photo. So make sure to read that. Um, then it says list, um, uh, list the soft and hard skills, um, software knowledge. So um, that's something that should be, again, at the beginning. Uh, it should be in a way of these um, keywords, as I mentioned. Uh, so that could be anything from for example, uh, management skills, uh, or if it's like software knowledge, I believe um, for you, it will be uh, maybe an um, analysis software, I don't know, like Python, or any like data analysis uh, software skills that you're uh, familiar with, you should be including there. Um, then we go to the work experience section. That should be inclusive of all achievements. Um, and uh, the experience should be listed from the most recent to the, the ones that are uh, further up. Um, and uh, you should be including the job title that you, have, you were holding, uh, the name of the company, uh, the industry. Um, and I want to point out here what's changed with um, this uh, peak of uh, remote jobs is um, sometimes uh, if the position is remote, uh, the hiring manager or recruiter wants to see if the person already is familiar with remote work if you have uh, experience. Uh, so what we like seeing is, um, as I said, you have the job title, you have uh, the industry, you have the name of the company, and then uh, you can add the headquarters, for example, if the company is based in uh, the Netherlands, and then you can just add uh, remote if you work remotely. Um, so that's something uh, nice to have. Um, then education section. Um, so you should include there any current studies or, as well as finished. Um, then we have the language section. Uh, only list the ones that are fluent in and uh, your overall level. 
uh, maybe later, later there will be um, an assessment where they will check your written and spoken uh, abilities. But as of now, um, having an overall level of the language um, would be um, sufficient. Uh, also, LinkedIn has a good um, specification where they said the limited working ability, full uh, native level, et cetera. So maybe you can use that, that one as well. Um, so certificates um, section, uh, just list the ones that are relevant to the job you're applying to. No need to go overboard with that. Um, then here are some things that um, you should not include. So no unnecessary details um, as uh, marital status, um, extensive list of hobbies. Uh, also one thing that I wanna emphasize is uh, there is no need to include your citizenship and full residential address. Actually including full, a full residential address can be um, a little bit dangerous because um, depending where you're applying, it can, you never, you, you don't know if the CV will end up in a um, what place. So I advise against that. And as to the citizenship, um, again, in the, job, in the job description, if it says um, the person needs to be a EU citizen or you know state your citizenship in the application, something like that, then maybe you can include it. Otherwise, no need to state it. Um, no more than three colors to be used for the design highlights comes back to that um, statement of um, how important is the design for the CV. <clears throat> so um, you don't need to include any colors if you don't want to. Excuse me. Um, however, if you do um, decide to go for colors, definitely uh, make them um, not, not some crazy colors. <laughs> so something that is uh, following the easy to read standards. Uh, those are the standards by, um, I believe, an EU organization. Uh, we have a link to this, so you can just Google easy to read standards and you will see uh, what are those and you can just follow them for your CV. Um, and lastly, no need to list uh, references in the CV. Uh, so sometimes we see people either list the names and contact information, or they just put a statement um, references upon request. Uh, that's something that's, um, that we, that there is no need to take the, the precious <laughs> space in the CV to, to put those because if uh, there is a reference check needed, uh, it's, it's considered that, of course, you will uh, provide those. Um, then we are going to, um, so another part, URA uh, resume. So URA stands for up to date, relevant, and adapted to the position of interest. Um, so as said, CV is a live document, and you always need to adjust it to the job you're applying to. Uh, for the education part, um, you should list your latest degree and or expected graduation date, uh, honors of our awards, and et cetera. Uh, for the key skills, competencies, and achievements, um, that should be highlighted and very like easy to, to see in the document. Um, you should present all relevant positions. So if you were a waitress during your studies and you're applying for a, a researcher at some institute, there's no need to mention that. Um, it depends. I mean, if some other positions, uh, and again, if someone is entry level, um, that could be relevant in terms of like customer service or something, but general for um, for the for for your kind of profile, um, it's absolutely unnecessary. Um, less relevant experience uh, should be condensed. So very brief, if, if you want to mention it, uh, you should focus on the one that's most relevant um, for the job, and uh, just uh, those are your strengths and highlight those. Okay, now I would like to share with you our resume adaptation, adaptation tool. Um, so generally you can make a, a little sheet, this uh, looks nicer in the presentation, but anyone can just make a very simple sheet. And uh, 
as said uh, in the email, um, Ornella or Yelena sent you um, instructions to prepare your CV and also to prepare um, job description for maybe a job you want to apply um, or just something that caught your attention. So I would ask you now to have the job description. And um, then you have two um, columns here. So first one is skills and competencies and the other one is importance. So one of the keys of crafting a perfect resume is actually being able to read the job description and to understand what are the, the skills um, they're looking for and how important is it for the company. So I gave here some examples of some job description, any job description. Um, so for example, let's say there's a job description and um, I estimated that um, the top three or four skills, so this is like, this should be top three or four skills. Uh, the top three skills is analytical skills, communication skills, and German language. So based on my ability, like how they presented it in the job description, I gave them rating from one to 10. So analytical skills, let's say the importance, the importance is 10, then communication skills, um, the importance is eight, and German is seven. So now we move on to this part. So we just, we're just adding a new column. So we have the rating from the previous one. This is from the job description. And this part, self-assessment, is how we, um, how we compare to the job description. So I know this part of the self-assessment can be a little bit tricky because um, not all people are um, differentiated. Uh, they're not objective about their skills. So if you're struggling with that, uh, especially if you're at the beginning of your career and you, you're not sure how you're comparing to um, other people and uh, the general level, um, you should be able to ask your uh, colleagues, uh, maybe from your previous job or from university or um, any mentors or professors that you had, uh, just approach them and tell them, hey, I'm applying for this job. These are the main skills. Um, you work with me on this and that. So how do you think that I uh, would rate from one to 10? Um, and yeah, having context is very important. So hopefully we'll have at least uh, one person to, to ask to, to help you out with that. Um, and then you, you add here in the tool um, the, the rate you would give yourself. So let's say here analytical skills in the job description is 10. However, in your self-assessment, um, the self-assessment of your skills is six. Then, I don't know, communication skills, eight, and you have 10. German, seven, and you have seven. Um, so, next part. Um, so, this is your self-assessment, and then here is your resume. So, um, so um, then you took, take your resume, and based on what you have here, so the skills, importance, self-assessment, you look at your resume and you give a rate for um, how is it reflected in your resume. So when someone is reading the resume, would they give you a 10 or would they give you a six or what grade a rate would, you, would they give you? Um, so in this example, let's say the person has a five, so it's a less prominent than um, in the, in the self-assessment that uh, their peers gave them, uh, and it's definitely uh, less than what is, uh, what appears to be important in the CV. Um, for example, communication skills is a six, while you're at 10, and uh, German maybe seems uh, stronger than it is. So what, <clears throat> what do you do with this information? The next part is um, your learning plan. Um, so first of all, once you have these uh, approximate ratings, you can make sure to update your um, CV so it does reflect the real uh, level of your skills. But also, um, it will help you with your, as we call it, your learning plan. Um, so maybe you need to work more on some skills, um, and then you can prioritize um, the skills and uh, is it high, low, or moderate the priority? So for example, for analytic skills in this example, 
the importance in this job description that the person was looking to apply um, is 10 and they have uh, six uh, or five in a resume. So they should update the resume and they should also work more on their analytical skills. So the learning uh, priority here is high. So you should concentrate more on improving that skill. Um, then communication skill, um, the importance is eight uh, in the job description and your self-assessment is uh, 10 uh, or six. So technically you should just update the CV. Um, so it reflects that you indeed have a 10 in this skill. So here, uh, the learning plan is low. And let's say German, um, it's uh, moderate because um, there's actually just one difference here. Um, so go back to this. Um, yeah, the point of this exercise is uh, you can you can do that with uh, any job description, and it will just help you to um, make sure that you're the right fit, and also it should be reflected in your CV, so the person, the, the hiring manager, can easily identify um, your skill. Um, so now coming to the, the also part of the resume adaptation tool is wording. Um, it's very important, the, the words we're using in um, the CV. And here we have um, an example. So uh, we have two, two like statements taken from an imaginative uh, CV. So the first one is uh, responsible for managing a team of uh, four junior researchers. And the other one is selected, managed, and mentored a team of four junior researchers. So you see the difference between um, these statements. Saying that you're responsible for something doesn't mean that you were successful in your performance. Um, you should be uh, using, um, as they call it, action words. Um, so action words, uh, some examples are collaborated, coordinated, aided, um, etc. Those are some of the words. You can Google them and uh, have a, a wider list of uh, words you can use, uh, verbs you can use. And um, you should also make sure, I want to emphasize here, um, in the CV, sometimes there are some buzzwords. Um, it's okay to use some buzzwords, but uh, some of them are completely unnecessary. And especially uh, if I see sometimes candidates putting them all in like one sentence and then it doesn't even make sense. So some of the, like those bad examples is for example, uh, honest. Uh, saying that you're honest is, is very, it's just like taking uh, the precious space of a CV because uh, the employer is coming up with the assumption that you, you have integrity and that you are honest. So there's no need to mention that. Uh, then problem solver, creative, um, and then they put it like in one sentence, so it doesn't really uh, make sense. So I'm an honest, proactive, uh, I'm sorry, I'm an honest, uh, problem-solving, uh, creative, uh, professional, something like that. So please don't, don't overuse uh, these uh, buzzwords. <clears throat> now here we have a good example of a CD. Uh, specifically part of the CV, the section where the um, experience is listed. And uh, I will ask everyone to take a look at this example and uh, just like contemplate on why is this a good example. And I will just go through it. So uh, when we look at this, we see the position, we see the industry, we see clearly the times this person was working in the company, name of the company, and uh, where was it located. Then reading here the parts um, that give more examples, we can tell that this person has um, experience with different um, software like technical skills like Tableau, um, also here uh, Power BI, um, et cetera. Then we can tell that uh, they're able to, to juggle a couple of uh, projects at the same time. Um, we can see that they're uh, collaborative here. It says they collaborated with uh, Deloitte US, Deloitte Brazil, uh, also means that the person uh, is able to work with different uh, cultures. 
Uh, so that's that's also uh, a plus if, if I mean the employer employer is looking for something like that. Uh, we see that they have experience working with uh, senior team members that have experience with uh, being analytical, uh, being data driven, uh, creating reports. Um, and this is this is just like one a few sentences, but it gives us so much information. It's so well described. So um, this is definitely. Um, something that would be an ideal example of how you should um, explain your uh, previous job description, previous job uh, experience. And we came to the part of uh, questions and answers. So um, how are we going to do this? Um, I believe we have some questions here in the chat. And there was also um, some questions that were sent via email. So, um, Yana, can you, can you help me with this part? Uh, yeah, maybe uh, if you want to start with ones that you already have, and then we can to continue. I have two from chat from Beatrice, uh, and then after that, the others can join also and ask questions. We have still like 10 more minutes, I would say. Uh, we started a bit later so i hope everybody agrees to to uh, prolong it a bit couple of minutes okay um someone raised a hand i believe yes uh hi andrea this is uh Pankaj. uh hello. you were uh, discussing about you know some managing experiences and experiences to you know select even the researchers and, and does that mean you also need to have experience of interviewing the uh, as a manager and selecting your junior researchers and then also you know managing them is that something you want to meant to be adding on to the cv mm, i'm a little bit confused by the question can you repeat i'm saying uh, i joined a bit late and the time you, you were talking about uh, you know there was a slide where you mentioned selecting and managing researchers and uh, so what do you mean? Do we need to you know, specifically elaborate that on, your, on our CV that we have selected and managed that some was, research? That was just an example. Do, do you mean this one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was just the part where we were talking about the words uh, you use in your CV and how important it is. And I was saying that you should be using action words. And this was one example of like, just the difference it makes between saying, um, I was responsible for managing a team of junior uh, or team of four junior researchers versus saying, I selected, managed, and mentored a team of four junior researchers. What sounds better? Yeah, makes sense. So uh, is, that, is that, can we use like um, only, only the term? as you know managing experiences or like worked as a manager no 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 this, this applies to anything. anything it can be from uh, i uh, gathered analyzed the data for this and that i mean now i'm talking from the top of my head but it can apply to anything it's just like the way you're you're talking about your accomplishments it, it's very important and i would advise you um, you can easily just uh, you can google action words, um, especially like if English is not your first language, in my case, uh, you Google action words, and then you will get a list of action words, and you can just uh, pick the ones that are, that, that are the best for your experience. Makes sense. So, as apologies for the confusion, because when I joined in, uh, this was a slide you were talking about. So yeah, I wasn't I'm sure, sure you, you, you joined a little bit by the end. So I, I think you, you missed the previous part. It was part of this. Uh, resume adaptation tool, which will help you to um, update and develop your CV. So, um, And uh, another question which I wanted to learn was, when you make your, your CV, you know, sometimes some organizations will ask you for a detailed CV, some will ask for a concise one. Mm -hmm. So is there any limit of the pages you need to have for a CV? Yeah, we were talking about at the beginning of the presentation. So. Um, there is a myth that you should always uh, contain yourself to one page. 
However, that's usually not the case and you can easily go to two pages. And if someone is a senior, um, meaning like more than 15, 20 years of experience, they can go even beyond the two pages. But the important thing to have in mind is to always follow the, the lean um, model of uh, CV, which is something that we discussed uh, in one of the slides and uh, making sure that you always uh, go through uh, analyzing the job description uh, making sure you understand what they're looking for and making sure that those uh, skills and competencies are reflected in your CV. Um, so yeah, technically no. Also, sometimes some companies have, uh, you probably encountered um, a system where you need to submit a CV and then you need to fill out um, certain fields with information. Um, so in that case, yeah, it can be one page and then you can add additional information uh, through their system. Uh, but generally, if you're sending um, CV, um, then no. And thank you so much. Uh, the last thing I wanted to learn was references. It's very really quite often to, you know, for employers to check for your reference or, you know, just provide them with your details. Maybe they do a phone call or they would just uh, send an email. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, the references should be very recent. That means recent means how many years they should be old enough, like five years reference should be okay or like two years. Depends. So, I mean, if a person was uh, in the current or past company for, let's say, five years, then of course they can include uh, only from, from that company, meaning um, it should be two references, ideally for, from two different employers or professors or however. So it doesn't need to be an employer, it can be a professor if you, if you work at the university or, or just uh, doing some additional studies. Uh, however, it should be two sources, yeah. Um, it should be as recent as possible, but again, depends on the circumstances. If you're applying for a job and you worked five years for a company, uh, then probably you're gonna include either uh, the references from that company or you're gonna include from the company before, which means that was five years ago. But if you can provide the most recent one, that would be ideal. Well, thank you for thank understanding you. my questions and your explanations. So. You're welcome. Thank you for attending. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. Uh, maybe we can switch now from, uh, to the ones from the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess also something was already covered during the presentation, but uh, the first one was, uh, are there like some specific job sectors that require only one page CV or two pages okay still with the key points on the first one that was the first question and the second one was about the keywords where is the the best to position them like uh, at the beginning uh, should we use the bold format or it's uh, to highlight like uh, some key evidence in the CV or better not Okay, as to the keywords, um, again, I'll try to explain. Um, we were on that slide where we were talking like top to bottom. So you have your name, you have the statement below that. Then if you decide to include a photo, it should be on the usually on the left side. And then below the statement, uh, for example, on the left side is, is the, the work experience section. And then somewhere around, so below the, the statement, maybe on the right side, it's a list of uh, the keywords. Uh, now, how you're gonna highlight them depending on uh, what format of the CV you're using. Again, don't overdo it with um, some uh, hard to read uh, font or very um, hard colors. I don't know how to like bright orange or something like that. You want it to be pleasant on the eye. So you can just uh, have them listed. Maybe it can be bold or it can be uh, highlighted with a color, but just don't make it too, um, too aggressive, <laughs> let's say, let's put it that way. Uh, I'm not sure um, that here, and uh, okay to use bold format to highlight key evidences in the role. Um, not sure what do you mean by key evidences? Do we mean like achievements? Maybe Beatrice, you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, explain what uh, did you mean by that? 
Yes, so I meant um, the evidence addressed in the description, or so the responsibilities that they uh, uh, they uh, give 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 priority. Yeah, so when you cover the evidence, is it fine to put bold formats or not? Yeah, I guess it's a well, I think this is the example that that shows how you should show it uh, reflected in the CV. So example projects, and there is no need to, to bold this part. Uh, it's just a, about the words that you use and how you, it's very congested, but it, it's including all the relevant uh, projects. And again, it's reflecting all the skills that, that I said that were important. Okay. So. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great. Uh, and so we the other one um, on the industry, on the sector yeah. sectors. Um, yes, there is there is no general rule for this. Um, it again is it comes up to the seniority level. Um, if you stick to two pages uh, for most companies, it will be okay. But again, if the company is looking for someone senior they will expect this person to have a lot of experience. So it will make, make sense that um, they will, um, they'll be okay with even going above two pages. And if you wanna to stick to one to two pages, uh, you, in your case, as your researchers, uh, you probably wanna share maybe uh, where you were published, et cetera. So you can add that either in the, in the CV, if you're sending the CV to the, to the hiring manager, or you can just, uh, they, you can add additional document with uh, your publications. So maybe something important to highlight here. So we had also uh, one question before the webinar. I would say like, it's about tips and tricks how to bridge uh, uh, industry, actually academia to industry. Uh, uh, and uh, it was actually how to tune your CV when you are do uh, coming from a research institute, let's say of the group, and you are applying for the company and uh, some industry, and also connected with that, how actually to uh, strengthen to your, your contacts uh, if you want to switch from the uh, academia to industry. Ornell oh. also wanted something to say, but maybe. It can be after the answer, I guess. Yeah, I think that's, is that from the email? Uh, yeah. Like tips for early stage biomedical researchers, right? Yes, and also okay. the, the first one. I think the, the rest we covered the main. Yeah, one. as to uh, bridging the gap, um, as a researcher, uh, you, you come with already certain certain skill set, so there are skills that are transferable, and that will be useful to your future career if you want to get into the industry. So make sure that you, when you're looking at your CV and your skills, you make you know what are the transferable skills. And again, it comes back to the tool that we showed. You take a job description, you go to the to the job description, identify those key um, skills, and then see how it reflects to you. As to like making that first contact, I would say that you should definitely be proactive. Um, just uh, reach out to, to people on LinkedIn uh, or attend any kind of seminars or conferences. Uh, you can practically reach out to maybe if you find a recruiter that specializes in that industry, uh, befriend them. Uh, there's nothing bad in uh, reaching out proactively to a recruiter and saying, hey, this is my profile I'm looking, uh, maybe have me in mind for any future roles. So yeah, just, just be proactive and um, yeah, attend any kind of conferences, fellowships and uh, give it a try. Thank you, Andrea. Ornella? No, my question was exactly about that. Um, and also, um, I, I have seen some resumes, for example, or some people suggesting that you should, of course, um, update your resume, have your resume fit the description. And sometimes people have not uh, put their job experience chrono chronologically, but rather, uh, depending on the position, they have put the... Um, 
most relevant position at first and then the rest of the, the positions. Is this very common or it's not recommended? In general, it's not recommended. I also see people sometimes not including the, the years. That's a mistake. You should always include the, the years you spend in the company. Um, yeah, so the, the person, the recruiter wants to see your journey as well. How did you, um, where did you start? Where did you end up? But again, you don't need to include all the job, job experience. So for example, if your current job is not something that uh, is relevant to the job you're applying to, but the previous one is, maybe you should skip that one and just put the previous one. And then on the interview, when you get to the interview stage and uh, you're going through your past experiences, you can share, okay, currently I'm working here and here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, is I would it, advise uh... definitely to have it chronologically. And okay. you have the, the, the ones that are less relevant condensed, while the ones that are most relevant um, just expanded. Okay. And uh, one last question. Um, for people who have uh, gone from one industry to the other, so it's not that, or for people with, um, uh, that do not have um, a tenure track like longer than two years in a company. Mm -hmm. uh, how uh, how do uh, recruiters see this? Is it like very tricky? Are they willing to uh, hire this kind of person? I know for some companies, uh, especially tech companies such as giants, such as Facebook, Amazon, usually people go and work there only for like one year, two years, and then they later leave. Uh, they just want to have it in their CV. Uh, but uh, some others might not be working for these tech, tech giants, but rather for smaller startups. Um, is it seen as uh, something like a flaky people, like they move from one one job to the other, or is it, or is it good? Um, no. So when it comes to the size of the company, it really doesn't matter as long as you highlight your competencies and you explain what the company was doing and what was your role in there. Uh, it doesn't matter. Unless the person, now we're coming to, if for example, in the job description, they're looking for someone with uh, managerial skills and they're looking for someone who has experience with managing 200 plus people, then uh, if you were in a smaller company, you probably wouldn't qualify. Um, but coming back to that uh, slide on, uh, should you uh, apply only if you meet all the criteria from the job description, uh, I think that uh, you should, as said, we with the clients, when we work with the clients, we always leave buffer. Uh, we always like first make sure that the job description is realistic, but then we leave a buffer. So there is, when we go through the CVs, uh, when we receive them, we, based on those first 30 seconds, we mark people as yes, no, or maybe. Um, so it definitely, there, there's space for people who are not coming from these big companies, like depends on the client, but generally I would say that uh, you shouldn't be too focused on that as long as you have the relevant skills. Okay, thank you. And also and, one, one thing to add yeah. when talking about transferring from one industry to another, you should be familiar with the terminology that you're there using. So for example, um, in your case, I believe that research skills would be the most important, maybe uh, collaboration, coordination, uh, budgeting, uh, people skills. Um, so those are some of the, one, the, the ones that are transferable skills, but also like uh, you should just uh, be sure to know the terminology of the industry you're applying for and then adjust it in your CV. Thank you. Is it a good idea, for example, to apply in a job position that you think the people who have written this job description has have made some mistakes. It's like, you know, when it comes to the job description itself, uh, for what example, kind of instead of um, instead of uh, describing the job of a data scientist, they are actually describing the job of a data engineer. And is this is this uh, something that shows what kind of company it is? Definitely. Uh, such Definitely. as the, the they are not ready for. And then that's, and that's only, it's not only about if they're ready or not. I, would, I believe that they just don't have clarity 
uh, on what they're looking for. And that could come from two places. One place is maybe they're hiring this kind of role for the first time in the company. And that comes with a burden of like, if you're the first person to do this position in this company, that maybe it will be more difficult for you to do the job. Not necessarily, but again, if they don't have experience with this kind of um, position that uh, maybe they don't know how it works and how you what you should be doing. So that's something to have in mind. And the second one is just like general unclarity. Again, some clients come with like very ambitious lists and uh, they deliver the, the responsibilities they have in mind for this position. And when you look into it, it's maybe like two roles or three roles sometimes. And you need to, as a recruiter, tell them, hey, you know, this is not going to work out. <laughs> like uh, you can always find a unicorn as we call it, like unicorn candidate. So someone who uh, can maybe do both, but that is very rare. So we always advise to, to go back to basics. Uh, we have a list of like questions to, to ask them to um, dive deeper on what they're actually trying to accomplish with this position. Uh, but yeah, if I was applying for a job and I see someone um, just uh, being very unclear or, or ambitious with a job description, that would be a flag for me, yes. Uh, thank you, Andrea, a lot. Uh, I would say maybe we can have uh, time for one short question if anybody from the audience have any. Um, Please feel yeah, free to Yeah, I also have the, the summary um, here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can then proceed if anybody, anyone has a question. Yeah, let's see the tips. Okay, so just to conclude this session, uh, resume is a live document, meaning that um, it's something that you, it's not something you do once and you don't do it ever again. You don't you need to come back to it all the time. So as you're at the job, you should be updating the CV. Um, you need to decide on the frequency for uh, resume updating. So usually it's uh, six months to one year. Uh, you shouldn't keep it uh, more for more than one year. Um, you can have it on your like, um, I don't know, Google Drive folder or just at your um, desktop or however you want, but it should be somewhere where you can easily access it and edit, um, tweak it. Uh, then keep your professional um, diary as a car, as context, action, result, method. So with every position that you had, either paid or unpaid, you always think about, okay, what lessons did I learn? and uh, where, uh, what are some achievements and uh, what is next. So that's this car method as we call it. Um, then ask your colleagues or peers for, to review. Uh, don't be shy to ask, you know, even one person is enough um, to just like help you out and uh, be a little bit more objective maybe and uh, give their opinion. And uh, make sure that uh, there are no spelling mistakes in the CV. Um, so there are now apps like Grammarly where you can easily see if you made a typo or something. So just make sure that you're, there are no spelling mistakes, especially if you're applying uh, for, for example, an English speaking or German speaking role. Um, that would be definitely a flag for the person uh, reading the CV. And that's it. Great. Thank you a lot. I think this uh, slide is really useful to uh, keep in mind as a take home message. Uh, we had also one question regarding the cover letters, but maybe we can uh, cover that in some of the next webinars. And with that, I would uh, like to thank everybody for joining and I hope you find it uh, useful. And thank you, Andrea, for all uh, input information. Thank you all for attending and uh, have a lovely evening. Bye. Thank you, Andrea. Bye. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Goodbye.